All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Thanks, Mark. Good morning. All right. Let me share screen. Let's see. I can go ahead and if anyone doesn't have the agenda notes already ready to go, just drop the link for them in the chat. Give it just another minute for people to join in. Holy moly, it is a new month. All right. As always, if everyone in attendance would please pull up the uh, agenda and add themselves to the attendees list. That would be greatly appreciated. And while we wait for any last attendees to trickle in, if we have any um, new people on the call who would like to say hello or introduce themselves and what brings them in today, we would love to hear from you. The agenda is looking pretty light today so far. So if there is anything on anyone's mind and they're not sure whether or not it belongs in the agenda or uh, brought up during today's meeting, definitely feel encouraged to speak up. Uh, if anyone needs help adding anything to the agenda, feel free to mention it in chat or speak up and let me know and we'll make sure to add it for you. Anyone with um, anyone who has joined the uh, Google Groups community should be able to edit the document and add things for themselves as well. All right. All right. It is five after, so let's go ahead and kick off. Welcome all. Of course, this is the weekly Kubert community meeting. Um, we will go ahead and remind everyone that the Kubert Summit CFP, um, it has been open for a little bit, but if you haven't got your um, proposals in yet, definitely be sure to get those in by tomorrow. CFP is closing and we look forward to seeing everything that the brilliant minds in the Kubert community come up with to share. If anyone does have any uh, last minute interest in getting an extra pair of eyes um, to review their CFP before submission, please feel free to speak up. Um, bring it to me or Andrew uh, in um, Kubernetes Slack. We will be happy to, uh, to help however we can. Thanks, Kat. I will do that. Awesome. It's good to hear. All right. And then in that case, it looks like Andrew has already gone through um, and staged things that should be added. If anyone has a, a bug or a PR um, or any conversation that is in the mailing list that they want to have more discussion on, please drop links to the things that are important to you on the PRs mailing list or bug scrub list, and we will jump into those. With the two that we have, we may as well go ahead and jump in now. Networking metrics being swapped.
Versus... Yeah, so... Okay, but yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. Sorry. So uh, this is a community member from uh, our Slack and uh, found out that um, we basically get and the reverse metrics from uh, what we expect. So if we expect to see it from the VMI perspective, we don't, we get it from uh, the host perspective. So if you want to, if you, for example, download chunky image and you expect the received metric to go up, you'll see the opposite. You'll see the transmit one going up. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, it, it goes like, uh, pretty dip into how uh, Libvirt reports them. And I am not sure how we could um, fetch the correct ones as in the ones that get taken from the VMI from the domain perspective. Maybe someone with uh, some Libvirt knowledge can advise what's missing here. Consistency is an interesting detail. Okay, is there anyone on the call who knows who we should at least um, CC on the bug, or is there any request for additional information? Barring any engagement now, uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on next week's agenda. Make sure we don't let it slip through the cracks. Um, let's see if we got some attention on it between now and then. Cool, thank you. Thank you for joining and uh, bringing it up. Anyone familiar with the network interface multi queue and how that translates into the XML? This looks believable, but I am not personally familiar. Yeah, it looks like the bug was added a few days ago. Um, the multi queue uh, just enabled the queues, so the receive and transmission would be missing. And that's what the user is asking for. But I'm not sure if that makes sense for us to do. Um, what are you saying doesn't make sense specifically? Sorry, pardon? Uh, I, I... I missed the the part about oh. what, what it doesn't make sense first. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it makes sense to expose 
API to specify what's the receive and transmission size of the queue. Yeah. Oh, I missed that part. Could add two fields. So I would leave it to somebody who has more network knowledge than me, but I don't see anybody on the call. Yeah. I will ping the networking guys. Thanks. It looks like Roman responded to this one, but it's not assigned. Um, do we expect this to uh, be healthy from this state? I know that we're gearing up for the 5.9, or the dot 5.9 release. Can you hear me? Um, Quietly, just very, very faintly. Yes, I've opened this issue and I just wanted to emphasize that this issue affects both the API server and the play and go package for people who are using it. And uh, what Roman had uh, suggested there is to use uh, something that is close to the go standard standard library but I've done a little digging and it seems like this library is also not very recommended. So maybe someone that has more web sockets experience can give his or her opinion. Right. For anyone that didn't hear clearly, it sounds like there are misgivings about both the Gorilla and the WebSocket library. So if there are other recommendations or reasons to, or otherwise reasons to specifically go with the WebSockets library um, inside, it would be great to hear. Why is that? Why is the Go uh, implementation not recommended? Yeah, Oral, do you have anything? I've uh, done a little research regarding the uh, libraries that we can use, and I've saw, saw in some discussions saying that this library is also not recommended, but I don't know why. I don't have uh, a lot of experience in the WebSockets uh, area. So if someone else has better experience and can give their opinion i would love to hear it do you have a reference as to where you came across the recommendation that the websockets is library is not recommended just so we have a starting place they themselves uh, referred to gorilla as a better implementation but when gorilla was deprecated they uh, removed this uh, recommendation and I need to look for uh, the PRs or the issues that I've seen to give this reference. I don't remember where it, where it was. I mean, we are not forced to switch to any other library as long as the Gorilla doesn't have a bug. Um, and it has yeah, a bug. I don't, I don't think it's because Gorilla has a bug. I'm pretty sure it's because the maintainer stepped back. There's no one currently maintaining it right now. Yeah, so the, we can state that for now it's okay. But if there is a critical bug or security issue, then we need to 
go away from the gorilla and move to, for example, the Go implementation. But I can see that in the documentation of the Go, there is a recommendation to use some kind of library which has more features. So I guess the only recommendation or the, the previous recommendation to not use the Go lang was because they were lacking some of the features. So maybe if they are not lacking the features we need, we can just switch to it. It looks like we've covered what is on the agenda. If anyone else has any last minute thing they'd like to speak up about, feel free to speak up now. Going once, going twice. All right, in that case, I'll go ahead and call the meeting. Thank you all for joining and for your participation. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Thank you. Good, thanks.